Genevieve Jones. A QM production. Starring Buddy Ebsen. Also starring Lee Merriweather. Mark Shera. With guest stars Lynette Metty. Chip Lucia. Robert Dobby. Tony Isley. Paul Mantee. Tonight's episode, False Witness. teaching shop to high school kids all week long, and then you volunteer to do the same thing here three nights a week on top of that, all right? <laughs> Pete, come on. You can't go until Leslie gets here. The whole point of this party is for Leslie to get to know everyone better. She has been here a week already. You haven't met her yet. She doesn't know what she's missing, and you can tell her that I have <laughs> a sparkling wit and that I'm a bright conversationalist. Mr. Humble. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're really going to be happy to Good night. Ciao. <laughs> Oh, I wonder where she could be. She better get here soon, or I am going to have all these hors d'oeuvres all by myself. It's only because you keep those feelings bottled up inside you that these problems occur. We'll uh, talk more about this tomorrow. Eh? Poor Dr. Jessup. No rest for the weary. <laughs> I seem to remember Freud taking some time out for parties. You're beginning to sound like my wife. But where is Leslie? Anyway, it's, it's 8.30. Yeah. I just spoke to her on the phone and caught her out, and she was just leaving the house. Well, I, I, I just called. The babysitter said she left right after talking to you. She could have stopped someplace, couldn't she? This time of night? He raped me! No. Lord! That's like... It's a nightmare for her, Barnaby. I mean, that's the only word I can think of to describe it. How's Leslie holding up? And talk to her. Nathan answered the phone when I called yesterday. Said she felt she needed more time to be alone. Yes, that's understandable. But given time, I'm sure she'll come around with the help of her family and friends like you. Well, here's the graphology report on the Rankin extortion case. I'd better get to that type. Oh, Betty, Betty, you're probably going to want to hear this. I ran into Lieutenant Biddle at police headquarters. He said they have a guy down there who they think might be Leslie's attacker. They have? Yeah, they stopped him for running a red light a couple of blocks from Webster House about the time of the rape. And he'd been drinking. They found out that the car he was driving wasn't his. They must have more if they're calling him a suspect. Yeah, he's got a record for beating up women. The only problem is Leslie doesn't want to go down and pick him out of a lineup. She doesn't. And if he can't charge him, then he has to release him. Well, I know Leslie has every right to be upset, but I... Betty, why don't you go over and have a talk with her? Take the morning off. Oh, Barnaby, I already feel guilty about taking those extra long lunches I take twice a week for my work down at Webster House. I'd say this is just as important. Thanks. <laughs>
Hello, Nathan. Betty, I, I was just about to call you, ask you to drop by. Nathan, what's this about Leslie refusing to go to police headquarters? She just sits there. She barely even talks to me. And the baby. She, she hasn't touched the baby. That's a classic syndrome. She's obviously internalizing her feelings of humiliation, shame. Damn it. It's my wife I'm talking about, not some textbook therapy case. I've never felt so completely helpless in my life. But maybe... Maybe you could say something that I can. Something to... to reach her. I can't believe how much Cheryl's grown since I saw her last <laughs> I just thought about the day you heard you were pregnant. You said, finally, finally. I do believe you were about the happiest girl in the world then. I'd really give anything to See you happy like that again. Betty, I really don't want to talk about it. Honey, you have to. It happened. And the only way you're ever going to be able to put it behind you is to face it. Did you rehearse this little speech with Nathan? Look, he's hurting too. I don't know what to say to people. Everybody knows. <laughs> you're talking as though you... You sound like you feel you're to blame for what happened. I just feel so... dirty. For Nathan, Cheryl... Honey, please. Don't put that on yourself. Why did it happen? Because that man is sick. And you just happen to be there. That's all. Don't you see it? Yes. I just need time to think it through. You'll have time. But, honey, the, the police can't hold that man forever. Well, maybe he's not the right man. Maybe he is. If you don't tell them, they're going to have to let him go. He'll be back on the streets. What happens if he hurts someone else? What about the next woman he rapes and maybe kills? No, oh, no, I'm not responsible for that. Oh, I'm sorry, you are. Leslie, you are responsible. And I don't mean just to yourself. To me, to every woman, to... You owe it to her. What kind of a world is Cheryl going to grow up in if we don't do something about it? All right. Will you go with me, Betty, to the police? Of course I will. Now, I want you to take your time, Mrs. Jessup. Look at each man very carefully. I don't think he's there, Lieutenant. You haven't really looked, Mrs. Jessup. John, this isn't easy for her. I appreciate that, Betty, but... Uh... Please, Mrs. Jessup, won't you take another look? It was dark in that cellar. I could hardly see. Anything, Mrs. Jessup. A familiar gesture. 
Something in the way he carries himself. Anything like that could be useful. This is Jessica. That's him, the one in the middle. That's the man. Are you sure? Yes. Number three, take him downstairs and book him. Arraignment will be tomorrow morning. We won't need you in court, Mrs. Jessup, until the preliminary hearing in two weeks. Uh, excuse me, Lieutenant, can I bail out my brother now? Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Tucker. I'm afraid Eddie will be our guest a little longer. We'll be adding charges to the ones already filed. More charges? If I were you, I'd hire a good lawyer. Jay, they're hanging me for something I didn't do. Get me out of here. Oh, excuse me. They say that the first step's the hardest. I think the worst is over, honey. Mm, I feel that way, too. We appreciate your help, Mr. Jessup. I'll see you later, Ben. Well, you think you're going to uh, feel all right to take over one of your classes on Wednesday at the center? Hmm? Uh, I don't know. Honey, the sooner you start getting your life back together again, the better. Okay, I'll be there. I said, what if you don't have the experience and the interviewer wants all your references. Oh, uh, well, don't lie, for one thing. Be straight, sincere. It'll impress them to know that you really want the job. Remember that on a job interview, uh, attitude is the key word. Well, how do you make yourself comfortable in this dude's office? I mean, are you allowed to smoke? What? To smoke. Oh, uh, yes, Eric. Oh, uh, wait a minute. Didn't you say last week that we should at least ask for permission before we smoked or I mean, anything like that? <sighs> yes, I did. I'm sorry. Well, at the present time, Mr. Martyr, she types 40 words a minute, but as I understand, she is improving every day. If her students come off as uptight as Mrs. Jessup on their interviews, none of them will get jobs. Okay, that's enough for today, everyone. Remember, Friday night, we'll run through the simulated interviews. Yes, thank you so much. Uh-huh, bye-bye. Are you all right? Oh, this idea of throwing myself back into my work wasn't all it's cracked up to be. Can't you wait to do that? Hey, I waited till after your class, didn't I? All right, all right. Come on, relax. I know it's rough, but you're gonna come through. I know you are. I wish I inspired that much faith in myself. Oh, hey, listen, you came through for the police, didn't you? I mean, picking that man out of the lineup wasn't that difficult, was it? Mm. Huh? You certainly look like the right man. Did I hear what I thought you said? He looked like the man? Tucker was the man, wasn't he? Sure. I mean, I told everyone it was dark in that cellar. Leslie, you made a positive identification. Well, you saw how nervous he was. He wouldn't have been so nervous if he didn't have something to hide, would he? Mm, Leslie, do you hear what you're saying? Of course he was nervous. I mean, he was pulled off the streets and, and put in front of a police lineup. Who wouldn't be nervous? <sighs> I picked the right man, didn't I? Tucker was the suspect. Oh, yes, but... Well, isn't that what you wanted? An end to this nightmare? Okay, picking Tucker was an end. Of course he's the right man. 
Leslie, I, I don't want to talk about it anymore. Something sporty for you, ma'am. I'm afraid I'm not in the market, Mr. Tucker. Wait a minute. Police headquarters, right? Yes. You're the one that identified my brother? No. I, I'm Betty Jones. I am a friend of Mrs. Jessup's, though. What do you want? I'd like to talk to you about the police report you filed. Thanks to your friend, I'm having to take out a second mortgage on my home. They just boosted Eddie's bail to $40,000. And for what? For running a red light in a car he borrowed from the lot. Employees do that all the time. He works here? Yes. Two weeks since he came down from Portland, I got him hired on as a junior salesman. Well, what I'm really interested in is the time that you mentioned in his alibi. You said he left here at a quarter after 8? Around 8.15. He had to be at some dumb poker game at 8 o'clock, and he was late. The gambling and the drinking, the kid's a heartache to me. What you're saying is that he was here while the attack on Mrs. Jessup was still going on. That's what I keep trying to tell the police, but nobody's going to take my word against, against that lady's. They think I'm lying because Eddie's my brother. Listen, he's made a lot of mistakes in his life. But Eddie is no rapist. That's an innocent man. You and your friend are railroading. <laughs> Brother said you want to help me if you can. I don't see how. If you're a friend of the woman who put me here. Well, the fact is, Mr. Tucker, I don't know if I can help you. But I do want to help Mrs. Jessup. And the only way to do that is to get at the truth. Oh. So that's what you're after, huh? Truth? Confession, maybe? All the gory details? Oh, come off it. Believe me, if you are responsible for what happened to my friend, I won't shed a tear when they lock you up for good. Well, I didn't do it. Is that going to be your plea, Eddie? Not guilty? The same plea that the uh, jury in Providence rejected when they sent you away for 18 months to Rhode Island State Prison? Yeah, well, if you know that, then you know the conviction was for assault and not rape. Only because you finally pleaded guilty to the lesser charge. Because it never happened. Oh, sure, she cried rape to the judge. Want her sympathy from the judge. Fact is, I only hit her once. Oh, I see. Mr. Nice Guy. Hey, all right. I mean, how long does the guy have to pay for one lousy mistake? I served my time. I got a nice job in Portland as a mechanic. Everything was cool. Until new management took over the company. And he ran a background check on the employees. And my record came out. All right. Two weeks ago, you moved down here to Los Angeles. Started work at the car lot with your brother. Making half what I made before. First, I said this, this job's the pits, but the manager liked me. He's even talking about boosting me up to a regular salesman. And he even knew about my record. Next thing I know, I'm Jack the Ripper. If things were going so well for you, your brother mentioned drinking, gambling. Why? Look, I said I'm straight. I'm not a monk. You know, I don't even know why I'm talking to you. Because that friend of yours lied. Now, wait a minute. No, you wait a minute. You know, if you're even interested in the truth, you know that I didn't do it. I was drunk. Did Jessup Woman say anything about the man stinking of booze? No. That's, uh, that's not much of a defense. No, it doesn't make much of a difference either, because nobody gives a damn. The ape's back in his cage. Lady, why don't you just stick with your tea parties? You know, you might get your nails dirty hanging around jails. Oh, it's not, it's not what he said. So... All right, it's what I felt. Did you believe him? I don't know, J.R. I, I just think there's room for doubt. Nothing Tucker says discounts Leslie's identification. No one knows that better than I. The stigma of rape hangs over that man's head because I pushed Leslie into that identification. All right, look, if Leslie sticks by her ID, the police are going to go ahead with the case against Tucker. But there is a simple enough solution. Right. If Leslie reconsiders and admits that she might have made a mistake in the identification, and if uh, this bothers you that much, Betty, why don't you talk with her? I still might be able to reach her. She has a class at the center. 
I shouldn't have to say this, Betty, but uh, you were perfectly right in encouraging her to make the identification. If she made a mistake, that's her responsibility. I could chant that over and over again to myself, Barnaby. It still won't wipe Betty Tucker's face from my mind. Thanks for saying it anyway. See ya. Uh -huh. What I'm wondering, Mr. Cirilla, is if you have to have a long flame at the end of a welding torch in order to get it working right. No, half an inch will get it burning nice and blue. Yeah. And that's all you need. All right, I'll see you later up in the shop. OK. Yo, Betty. Mm. You know, I was just going to leave a note in your office. Oh, well, what can I do for you, Pete? Well, not for me. Uh, you know Joey Rothman? Yes. Well, there's a job opening for a lathe operator at Chokestone Construction. And I think he's good enough for the job. Oh, well, I'll call the personnel manager. That's terrific. Oh, great. I, have you seen Leslie? Well, Sina, you know, I haven't even met that lady. And from what's happened around here, I'm surprised that she's still around. Hi, Mrs. Jones. Uh, oh, Elaine, I'd like to see you. Uh, thanks, Pete. Thank you. Hi. Hi. I'm a little late for typing. I oh, I'll, I'll walk along with you. I got a call from Mr. Martyr of Great Pacific Insurance Company. You have your appointment tomorrow morning, and there is the address. So soon? I don't think I'm ready. Oh. What am I going to say? Honey, relax. You'll have plenty of time in Mrs. Jessup's class tonight to go over everything that we've taught you about job interviews. <laughs> oh, I sure hope Mrs. Jessup's got her act together by tonight. Elaine, don't you think you're being a bit harsh? Oh, no, I didn't mean it that way. I know it's been rough on her. But at least the police nailed the guy. It's too bad they didn't get the one who got me. I mean, if only they had cut down all the bushes sooner or put up more lights. Elaine, wait. Are you saying that... You were raped, too? Oh, no, Mrs. Jones. At least you didn't get that far. The guy grabbed my, my purse and ran into the bushes when I screamed. That was about it. Bushes? When did this happen? Oh, five, six weeks ago, before you even got here. The police found it later in the cellar, empty. The cellar? Elaine, do you think it's possible that this could be the same man who attacked Mrs. Jessup? I couldn't say. I didn't see his face. It was really dark, and it happened fast. Do you know if there... Any other girls who've had the same kind of problem? Patrona Perez. She was raped. I don't think it was here, though. Patrona? I placed her the first week I came here, and she never said anything to me. I don't think she even told the police. Do you know any other names? No, but someone who would know is Dr. Jessup. When girls have problems, they usually go and talk to him about it. Yes, Freddy. Perez girl came to me with a problem. You can't expect me to break a confidence in discussing her case or in disclosing the names of any others who might have come to me with the same problem. Nathan, don't you see? If there were other girls at Webster House who were victims or near victims of the rapist, and it can be proved that the attacker in each case was the same man, then that would clear Tucker. He was living in Portland until two weeks ago. Betty. Why are you doing this? Why can't you just let the wounds heal? Forget about it like I have to forget. Leslie, please believe me. I'm doing this because I'm your friend. You... We may have made a horrible mistake. I'm talking about a man's life. Well, the police don't think I made a mistake. Leslie... You didn't go through the hell I went through, Betty. Staring into that madman's face, those angry brown eyes. Honey, you've never said anything about the color of his eyes. Please, I need to know there's someone who understands what I'm going through. Look, Betty, I believe that what you're doing, that you think it's right, but you're mistaken. You weren't there. You know I wouldn't lie about a thing like that. Of course you wouldn't, not intentionally. But, honey, isn't it possible that you're... you're remembering the color of his eyes after the fact? After you've seen Eddie Tucker, whose eyes happen to be brown? No, it isn't possible. <sighs> Look, Betty, I'm going to be needing a little more time to myself. I see. What about your work at the center? You'll just have to get along without me. Nathan, please, before things get any worse than they already are, give me those names of the other girls. There are only two. 
Besides Perez, talk to Angela Dwyer. Ah. I can't wait to shower and wash out the smell of this joint. Go to my place. Did Mr. Constantino say what time he wanted me on the lot tomorrow? I have to talk to you about that. The boss feels that under the circumstances, with uh, the publicity and everything, that... What? Maybe it'd be better if you... Maybe took a vacation? Well... There goes the sales job. Now, he didn't say that. It's said Jessup's fault. It's always some woman. Eddie, Eddie, what are you going to do? You don't want to know, Jay. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I had to put up the house to get you out of here, everything I own. Now, you've got to stay straight. I mean it. Just stay away from that woman. Sure, Jay. Sure. It's disconnected. There's no new number. All right, operator, thank you. I appreciate your help. Still can't reach Angela Dwyer, huh? Mm -mm. Angela was a friend of Petrona's. Aren't you looking for her, too? Yes. I don't know how to reach her until she's at her job tomorrow. Well, you got your hands full for now. Mrs. Jessup's class is waiting. <sighs> and, um, then one summer when I was 16, uh, my uncle gave me a job. Elaine, wait a minute. Did everybody catch it? Look at yourself, huh? your body language. You know what it says? It says I'm uptight, I, uh, I could care less about this job. I want to get out of here. <laughs> Just remember, you stand a better chance of your personality. Mrs. Jones, are you all right? were you all night? What are you, my keeper? I had a poker game. The police came by, Eddie. They're looking for you again. I think you tried to wipe out that witness. Wipe out what witness? Yeah, a Jessup woman. Somebody, somebody shot up her classroom and they think it was you. Senora Jones, how nice to see you again. What happened? Oh, it's just a little accident. Patrona, how are you enjoying your job? It's wonderful. I have you to thank. They would have revoked my green card if I didn't find a job after the dress shop closed down. Patrona, I, I came here for another reason. Yes? I wanted to talk to you about something that happened to you while you were still coming to Webster House. Something that you, you never told me. Something bad. A man raped you, didn't he? Yes. Did it happen at Webster House? No. It happened in the hallway of my apartment building. I was coming home one night. Coming home? From Webster House? Yes. Oh, go on. He, he pulled me into the laundry room, and he, he... Patrona, did he have a gun? Yes, but he didn't use it. I think it was so I wouldn't scream. Can you describe it? What did it look like? Just a gun. You know, 
like the kind a of policeman would have. It was white. Where you hold it? The white handled gun. I think so. Trono, I want you to look at this very carefully. Is this a picture of the man who attacked you? It was dark. The light bulbs, they were all broken. He could have been the man. Maybe. Maybe. All right. Uh, one other thing before I go. Would you have any idea where I might be able to reach Angela Dwyer? Angela? No, I don't think she ever found a job through Webster House. Wait, wait. She once asked me to go with her to where she takes dancing lessons. A dance class? Where? In the valley somewhere. I couldn't go. But why don't you ask Mr. Cerilla? Pete Cerilla? Our shop instructor? He took her out a couple of times. There you go. All right. There you go. All right, it's your turn, Eric. Good luck. <laughs> hey, Betty. Uh, so what, what was the name of that girl again? That, uh... Pete, um, if you're stalling because you dated a girl against the rules, I, I don't care about that, really. I, it's important that I find Angela. Well, all right. I mean, what the hey, right? It's not like I can lose my job, is it? <laughs> right. Yeah, sure, you know, Angela went out with me a couple of times, but, uh, but where you can find her? I mean, I don't, I don't have the foggiest idea. It, yeah. Hey, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. That's all right. <laughs> Listen, can I use your phone? Oh, yeah, go ahead. It's Thanks. right in the back over there. Thank all right? you. Betty, have you any idea how many dance studios there must be in the valley? And what is she into, anyway? Is she into ballet or tap or disco? A roller disco? You know, the list goes on and on. I'm sorry, JR, but that's all I have. Wait a minute, here's Barnaby. Betty. Betty? Eddie Tucker is still on the loose. He ran when the police approached him. Uh, Barnaby, I swear, the more questions I ask, the more answers I get, the more convinced I am that Tucker is not our man. It has to be some other man that's been attacking all these girls uh, around the center. Well, maybe we better turn our thinking inward. Can you get me a list of all the male volunteers and employees at Webster House? I want to run some uh, quick background checks. Yeah, yeah. Um, in the top drawer of my desk, there's a Webster House mailing list. Thanks, I'll check with you later. All right. Thanks a lot, Adrian. Hey, it's OK. Bye. All right. What are you doing here? You want to help me, right? Well, you can. Give me your friend's home, home address. Leslie? Yeah, she made a mistake. I mean, you believe that, don't you? I, I, I've got to talk to her face to face and, uh, and make her see that I'm, I'm not the guy.
You really shouldn't be here. You should turn yourself in. You're not doing yourself any good being here. Thanks for nothing, lady. Tucker! Come on back. Cut him off. All right, all right. Hands on your head. Your car? Yeah, what of it? Never saw it before, right? Eh? Hey, what is this? All right, Tucker, you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. You understand that? Helping us very much. Claims he never saw that gun before in his life. If the bullet that was fired at me came from that gun. Well, along with Leslie's testimony, that would just about cinch the case against him. So I've been right all along about that man, Lieutenant. Would certainly seem so, Mrs. Jessup. Betty. Webster House. No, Betty's away from the phone, JR. Can I take a message? Yeah, would you do me a favor and tell her that I let my fingers do the walking and I hit Tater here on the second page. Angela Dwyer is enrolled at the Carmel School of Dance and Music on Barham. I still can't believe that I could have been that wrong about Tucker. Well, let's just be thankful he didn't use that gun on you. <laughs> yes. Excuse me, Betty. This oh. just came from JR. Oh, thank you. Angela Dwyer? Yeah, he said to say you could catch her there if you hurry. Thank you. What's this? Hmm. Oh, a loose end. It's not important anymore. Uh, well, let's see if we can get some work done, shall we? Right. <laughs> How'd your hot date with the police computer go? Well, no name exactly jumped off that list. No uh, police record or anything like that. Back to square one, huh? Not necessarily. There's one name that just didn't add up. No driver's license and a social security number non-existent. You think it's an alias? Or a mistake. Uh, Third, looking at, uh, why don't you give uh, Betty a call over at Webster House? I just did. I guess she must be away from the phone. Well, we might as well take a ride over there and talk to this Mr. Wall. She's a custodian.
I'll see if Betty's around. You take a look for Walsh. There's a box full of them. Where's Walsh? The handyman? He was working. I saw him leave just a little while ago. Was he here when you gave Betty that address? Sure. He left right after her. Key to this dance studio. Do you know where it is? I know where it is. I'll lock up when I'm ready to leave, Mrs. Foster. Look, I told all this to the police once before. Some creep was hiding in the back seat of my car one night, and that's all I know. Angela, is this a picture of the man? No. The cops made up one of those drawings. The composite, you mean? Right. Only why should they be thinking to look around the Webster house? I mean, wouldn't I know him if I'd seen him around that place before? Not necessarily. A lot of people come and go all the time. If he works there or occasionally comes there, he could have seen you and followed you. Angela, would you come with me to police headquarters? They must still have that composite. We might be able to clear an innocent man. Sure. Thanks. Oh, my God, it's him. You just couldn't leave things alone, could you? I don't know what to say to him, Betty. You know, you don't have to go through this, Leslie, if you don't want to. Oh, yes, I do. I owe that man an apology. Which is only the start of what I owe you. I'd say that Leslie's going to make it all right. I know she will. You know, it's terrific how we were right about Tucker all the time, isn't it, Betty? 